what do you guys think should be the story that could push or what do you think a story that could be that could push um the manga industry forward or whatever shonen jump forward like for instance what i've been really doing this week i've been for some reason i'm back onto overlord and i i fell in love with all over again i remember why because overlord is basically you're watching the isekai from the villain's perspective right could do you think they could do a shonen from a straight villain's perspective and and could that sell because i think that could be what could i would like to see that if that's in the next generation of shonen jump before you For the BSS news, I actually want to dedicate most of this segment to this new announcement. Obviously, even past the whole the Jujutsu Kaisen and five chapters, Shueisha is announcing a jump uh, next generation battle manga award competition. Right? Essentially, that means that anyone who's producing a battle manga, doing one shots, anything like that, you can submit your one shot to this competition. The judges are Kubo for Bleach, Horror Coach for My Hero, Tab Tabata for Black Clover. Gega Gatami for Jujutsu Kaisen. I think this is so big because I've been talking about this for a while about how big manga is becoming worldwide. Like all these worldwide competitions that are happening. Obviously, the Viz one shot program. So I would recommend to anyone who is making manga. I know I'm about to, I'm about to submit my, my one shot version. I implore you guys to submit, get your stuff out there. And you never know what could happen. Like you could, like they're trying to find the next big hit. Obviously, My Hero Academia ending, JJK is about to end. These stories are gonna are passing. They're trying to find the next big story and find new talent. So you never, you just never know. So if anyone is out there in the BSS community that is making a manga, making a one shot, I highly recommend you submit to this contest and also the Viz, um, Viz Media one shot program or just content in general. They they typically have a lot of worldwide contests, but a hundred percent submit, one hundred percent. I will get you guys things like like this is another thing that can go for the 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 manga the anime manga side worldwide competitions. Millions of people submit to these. This just shows how big manga is. Like I, it's crazy. Uh, that's huge to me. You got, and it's not like they're just picking random people. You got some yeah, of the wow. best or the most notable to to judge this thing. So you know it's. I'll say this. Obviously, I've never I've never read Bleach or or I've never read Bleach. I've read Black Clover. But if I'm making something and I know Kubo and Tabata are about to read it, you're gonna you about to see some A1 people throw really good stuff out there. And Ty, go ahead and submit that one shot, bro. Tell me what tell I me got, what we I got, do this I, got, I got a one shot version. I've corrected so many things. And also a fun fact: this is how um Fujimoto got on the scene. He's he was winning a bunch of contests like this. That's why Fujimoto ended up doing Fire Punch Chainsaw. I'm like, this is how Fujimoto became known in the manga industry through these contests. So, like, literally, they that you can these contests produce some of the best talent that are of the next generation, typically. So, I mean, I'm all gassed. right, I'm gassed. Would, would it be possible for us to see? Would they obviously they're going to pick a winner? Would we see like maybe some honorable mentions or anything like that? Or Anything yes. like that that comes out because I would I would like to see, especially with everything. God, everything's ending. Even on like the um, what do you call it? On the slice of life side, a lot of big <laughs> names are ending. So we there's a really big, at least maybe from my at least from what I read, there's a big gap right now in terms of me trying to get into new manga right now. Like I don't I tried reading that that comedy yokai manga Riddell that's on Shonen Jump that's really popular. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I, I try I to read it. I, I can't. After, yeah. I, I would say they. So what they're doing is that there are three winners. So like a um, gold, silver, bronze. I don't know if they're, how much they're doing for, as like as far as like honorable mentions. But we, I, there will be more than one winner, and they will get publication in Shonen Jump, um, the Shonen Jump app. Um, so it'll be a digital publication. So I think that's just really cool. Like I think it'll probably most likely be on Manga Plus because a lot of times, the Manga Plus competition they published the winners on manga plus so either be on the shonen jump app or manga plus and it's just cool that you could literally have your work next to like jjk for example like like as they're scrolling they'll see your work that's just cool that's fire to me so so ty from a writer's perspective answer this mm -hmm. um what would you recommend obviously you wouldn't know because you're not them but from your perspective 
what would you think would be the best way to approach writing a story for this competition? Would you go um, short game type of story? Would you give it like a length, like, hey, man, maybe something concise, like Attack on Titan, like 123 chapters? Like, what do you so, think is the best way to approach it? So I think, so a lot of these are one-shot competitions. So you would have to pretty much do a completed story in one chapter. Now, right. I do think that, like, so, like, the, for example, the Viz program, there is a section to submit a one-shot and there's a, a, a section to submit a continued series. So for the one-shot, which most of these contests are, you should try to create a completed story within one chapter so the characters, core wound, their goal, their motivation need to all be very clear and resolved by the end of the chapter. Um, and I would also say, be, I think, and it's something I've been noticing when I'm studying a lot of these like manga chapter one's openings, that these characters are very explicit about what they're, the, the, the needs and wants of the characters are very explicit. Like for example, Thorfinn wanted to be a Viking, like Aaron wanted to be a scout. These things are, they just straight up tell you what the characters want so you can attach them quicker. So I feel like a lot of times I've done the mistake, the mistake as well. In my, my previous works is you'd be a little bit too vague with things and it kind of, I think, stops people from connecting to your characters. Like people, clown narc for saying he wants to be okage and it's like very like explicit but these when you I, I i guess what i recommend is when you see patterns like this the authors are doing it for a reason so i would say try to be upfront about what the characters wants and needs and then concluding the story um in that one chapter for that one shot program so ty if you don't mind me asking for your one shot was it hard because obviously you're still building your story mm -hmm. by the way we need we need a status update on volume three the people need it um but how hard has it was it very hard for you to condense your story into one chapter so because i've told people this i'm doing the reboot of, of a reboot of my, my my manga right and really if you adjust a few things about a lot of chapter ones they could work as one shot so for example naruto chapter one could work as a one shot if naruto's goal was to graduate from the academy because technically he graduated from the academy and then his story be completed like his story is I want to work hard so I can prove to myself I can graduate from the academy and start my life as a ninja. If that was simply his goal, then the story would technically have been completed in chapter one. You could that could that'd be a nice wrap of the story. Now, obviously, his goal is not completed in chapter one because he wants to become Okage. But if you were to basically lower the scope of his goal, you could technically complete a story. So the reboot version I'm doing, I am keeping the same goal. I'm just lowering the scope of it so that it can be completed by the end of the chapter, essentially. Mm -hmm um why has you been a little quiet so far you know we got in our little rambling <laughs> per usual uh what do you think about this contest well i tend to be quiet because i'm interested in hearing all the news that you have to to give that's mainly it uh i think competitions like this are are needed especially because of all the ending um series that's con that's, that's kind of going on i think that variety is kind of uh something that i would personally be looking for a different like uh, I guess angle. I think when Chainsaw Man came into Shonen Jump, it kind of brought a different perspective. When JJK came, you know, like it brought a different perspective. When My Hero came, it brought a slightly different perspective um, than what we usually get traditionally from Shonen Jump. So I'm kind of excited to see how Horikoshi and him concluding his uh, uh, concluding his series with his mind. And you know, I've read all of Horikoshi's you know work, or I would say all of them. I haven't analyzed them, but I've read all of most of his work. And he has changed so much since the beginning. So um, because of his now, you know, concluded series, successful series, I wonder how he's going to be able to judge the next generation. Um, and like what, I mean, I don't know if they tell or they kind of explain their their reasoning. I, I'm pretty, I, I've never, you know, I don't know. Please somebody school me on that. But I would love to know like what, what they're looking for um, and, and what makes a, a, a one shot like actually, you know, worthy of turning it to a serialized series uh, uh i guess manga i i would i would say i i, I don't I, to be honest with you i don't think they should tell us what they're yeah, looking I, for yeah. right because like like i really i was very interested in what you said like every big series adds something to shonen jump obviously and i don't know how long if if Riddell, you've told uh wise about your Riddell feels like shonen jump needs to die in term in, in order for whatever the manga industry like whatever the manga industry needs to do to get forward like so i want this is actually a question to everybody that's interesting this is actually a question for everybody but what do you guys think should be the story that could push or what do you think a story that could be that could push um 
the manga industry forward or whatever shonen jump forward like for instance what i've been really doing this week i've been for some reason i'm back onto overlord and i i fell in love with all over again i remember why because overlord is basically you're watching the isekai from the villain's perspective right could do you think they could do a shonen from a straight villain's perspective and and could that sell because i think that could be what could I would like to see that if that's in the next generation of Shonen Jump. Before you go into that, I do want to clarify because that is a strong statement for our first sorry, time. Sorry, yeah, I, I just I said it real quick. <laughs> um, when I when we we were talking about Shonen Jump and all these manga that are disappearing, the statement was more so after the One Piece JJK MHA, and that period afterwards, I do feel like that Shonen Jump shouldn't have a monopoly. On which manga is successful because we see all these new stories come in they're not successful because it's a mainly catered to the japanese audience if they don't like it it's not going through so my issue or what i want is for other either editorials or just more of a more of a broadening of the type of audiences that matter in determining the success of manga which is why the statement Shonen Jump should die in the sense that it should no longer be a monopoly after One Piece in determining successful manga on the mainstream. So that's what I meant by that. What do you think, deter uh, if I may, what do you think, deter like, are you saying that, sh that Shueisha or Shonen Jump is actually the one that determined the success of a manga? Or are you, like, what do you think is the determining factor? That's like a question. Well, I is think it, it the caters Japanese to the audience? Japanese audience first. Yeah. And but they don't like it then at those manga and of course there's other magazines but shonen jump's the big one it's the mm -hmm. big dog on campus you want your stuff to get popular on shonen jump so that's mm -hmm. what i'm talking about in the sense that it should be it should be involving more than the japanese audience nowadays since anime manga is so popular nowadays and determining its success because there's some good manga that maybe the japanese audience won't like i see i think yeah. um to that point, I think that it's kind of a, it's a very, a thin layer for you to put all of your eggs in the basket of international audience being the supporting, I guess, uh, viewership or whatever, or fan base for a series. I think it's actually important to kind of keep that, <laughs> like start with the Japanese audience and then expand out from there, um, I understand it is kind of like a, I mean, in YouTube, in, in this case, YouTube does it himself. They, they analyze whether your video is going to be successful by putting it to your core audience first, right? And it's, and then you're establishing the, the base analytics and then they start to slowly um, uh, push it to, you know, a larger audience that's kind of out of your sphere in order for them to kind of get a better, um, um, to, to identify the exact people to put the video, put, to put this type of content in front of. And I think that's what Shonen Jump is doing is up to some degree. Of course, the Japanese audience is different from us, but if you establish like your core, your core um, audience and it's successful with them, then it makes sense to me, at least coming from a content creator's perspective to start off with the core audience and then slowly branch out because at least you know that your core audience is going to enjoy it. If you if you, if you don't know that they're going to enjoy it, then how are you going? You're just banking on somebody else enjoying it personally. So I mean, I guess it's just in perspective. That pertains yeah. to what Daniel said. I mean, we all loved, at least most of us did. We loved um, Dear an Enemy. I'm mm -hmm. still mad that they canceled that, but it literally did not cater to the Japanese audience, and yeah. they paid for it because. I wish somebody else could could grab that and do something with it. That's such an interesting premise. The characters were good, the powers, but it's it's just a shame that that had to go by the wayside. Yeah, that's and understandable. initially, <laughs> what you said, I 100% agree because that's how the that's how it becomes big. It finds your core audience and then it branches out. Mm -hmm. I believe, at the very least, that it's reached the point where enough attention and audience internationally are strong enough to cater to them more and of course if it's a japanese manga japan's going to be in the forefront mm -hmm. but i would also advocate for not only them which is why this contest is so good because 
they actually kind of emphasize the idea that we want your culture to be involved in the manga mm -hmm. to, to create that variety, but also more editorials, more uh, indie manga creators start popping up across the world to emphasize that you don't need to be in Shonen Jump to be a successful, good, and popular story. So moving away from that mm -hmm. overall is what I hope happens. I still love Jump, Shonen Jump. There's still, there's still amazing stuff <laughs> on Shonen Jump. But Japan um, Japan. eventually I want to move away from that for sure. I actually think, I actually think that it's already doing that because – we bring up the weekly rankings a lot, where things go and typically where you fall at will determine if you get asked or not. But I think the reason why I think we're already getting that is because Cocker Bacha, for example, at a now Dear Anemone was performing very poorly across the board for pretty much its entire run. But Cocker Bacha had stretches where it was like Dear Anemone, but it's but its digital sales did so well outside of Japan. They was like, all right, we're gonna keep this up, and mm -hmm. it didn't it did, it didn't fall. And now Kagabachi's on. That's like Kagabachi, like this past week is like, crazy right now. Kagabachi been on a top 10 run My for man. a while. For a while. Oh, you broke up, uh, Todd. Okay. Can you say that again? Oh, so what I was saying was is that because of the digital sales of Kagabachi, it stayed and it, I didn't need to ask. And now it's doing so well that it beat out One Piece in, the, in this past weekly ranking. Mm -hmm. And it's been doing that for like a few weeks now. It's been in top 10 for a few, a few weeks, but. They were both on a similar trajectory, but Kagabashi sold well outside of the outside of Japan. It stayed, and Dear Nimini just didn't perform well. So I don't know if it was like a Dear Nimini performed well everywhere else but Japan, but he got axed. I just don't think it performed well in general. Mm. Hmm. So uh, don't I don't forget the question I asked about uh, kind of going off what Y said about each story bringing something new to the table. Mm. Um, and I want to ask for everybody. I said I'd like to see a shonen story. From a villain's perspective, villain perspective, I would love to see something like that because I think when when they're told very well, like if I got a My Villain Academia, but that was a full manga, I think I would really enjoy that because I love the manga. The anime messed it up, but I love the manga <laughs> version of it. I think we got oh. we got that we got that with like Defno, yeah. for example. Defno was a was a was a shonen story that was from a villain's perspective. But I, and, and I got it, that. But now we, I think if we bring that trope back now. Awesome. Like I'm talking, like do you, do you, do you, light at the start of the story was not a bad guy. I think yeah, I'm saying from, from I don't the think start the, of the story. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't think the story. The point of uh, um, Death Note was that he was a villain per se. I, I right? think he, that's I kind think of why I think the um, being ambiguous. Was like always anybody like a, could be. You know, like, I, 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 I think. Know? I think. His position was a villain, like for the story. Now, with I think I'm not saying a villain as in he is a hundred percent morally he's Sakuna, but he's a villain though. Like he is, he's like, are you getting my way? I'm gonna kill you. Like he was a villain. Like and, it, and it's also I he's trying to play God. He's like, I decide who lives and dies. Like who gives you that right? Like he he wasn't do like yes, he's trying to make the new world. But he wanted to rule the world. I'm gonna be the God of the new world. I decide who lives and dies. And you if you disagree with that, you you get you die. This dude's a villain. Like. Yes, he's not like a uh, twisting mustache. I, I want I just do it for like I mean Loki kind of did it for fun, Loki, but even, I think even, stories I think he's a villain for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I think stories like that and also Hunter Hunter. I, I think that they're they have a different, I guess, uh focus for their like their premise or you know, where their focus is. A lot of shonen series they have like this theme that they want to like establish and like it's basically like do this, don't do that, be this way, don't be that way. It seems that way in many cases. I think series like um, Death Note and Hunter Hunter really just encapsulates what it's like to be in this position or like to experience this or be in a situation where like if you could be like this, this would kind of some this would be like an extreme level of that. I think Hunter Hunter is fantastic at it. Um, um, like the whole the whole um, uh, um, Shoot, I just lost it. Monsters, humanity, X, Y, Z thing. I think Hunter Hunter does a perfect example or does a perfect job with that. It doesn't really tell you exactly like you need to be this way. You need to do this. Some series is like, you know, you should be helpful. You should be kind. You should have friends. You should, <laughs> you know, X, Y, Z or do the right thing. Um, I think series like. <sighs> I think that that would be an interesting premise, though, like having a, a series following the villains. It'd be really difficult to pull off if they start off as a villain. 
I think that you you would have to you would have to have like a, a strong origin or something like that. Like Shigaraki, if he was the main character, but it started off like or Dobby. Oh my gosh. If Dobby was the main character or something Dobby like that, could. and like if Dobby was the main character, like and we just got it from like his his thing, and like all we see is Endeavor's the number two hero, we get in the story from Dobby's perspective. My goodness, that'll be that Horikoshi would cook because we already know the Todoroki story is top two. He spent right? a lot of time on that. He loved that. It's, it's great, A. You know what I'm saying? It's great. It's, it's, it's the best story in my academia. But like, just for example, like to your point, I think that that would be an interesting. Uh, it would just be really difficult because not a lot of people knows how to write good villains. One, and I don't think a lot of, a lot of, or a lot of uh, uh, creators or mangakas or you know writers itself would be able to like like what would be the point like that would be that like what would be the over like what would be the 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 ending what would be the point of that story like that would be the question that i would what would be the theme what, what things are you going to follow like what is it you know what i'm saying like there's nothing wrong with that but i would just be curious on like what are you trying to tell me what is it that you're trying to you know express to us the readers about your story that would make me care enough to continue even outside of just being an interesting concept like, you know? For instance, Overlord yeah, does a really that. good job. We're gonna we're gonna have to pause on this one because oh, we are thirty no. minutes oh. in. Oh. We, uh, now, hey, random, you, you you got me thinking, man. I like that. 